morning. I hope all of you are awake. You can't see your faces, so I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much for the invitation given. And uh, my name is Ranil Fernando. Some of you may know, but others may know. So I have to do this uh, surgery specialty in 10 minutes. It's very difficult to do this uh, thing in 10 minutes, but I'll give it a good shot. There may be many questions coursing through your mind as you look. Uh, before I come to this, at the end of a seminar like this, some of you may end up totally confused and not know. You know, you may be less better off than when you started. But don't worry, because I always say surgery is here, so the path will be clear. So don't worry about it. So we will uh, continue. So the question that may go through ahead is what is surgery? And also, why should I consider a career in surgery? The rewards and drawbacks. And also, what are the prospects? Uh, some of the speakers before me have already told you about these things. So let's go through. When you think about surgery, actually it comes from this Greek word chirurgia, meaning hand work. People who are able to uh, cure or treat people with their hands. You see, this is a very narrow concept of surgery. It's a very old-fashioned concept of surgery. In fact, surgery is a lot more than that. The patient that treats uh, operative and manual instrument, but this is, again, a whole definition. It's a lot more than that. In fact, as I always say, I worry more about patients that I don't operate than on the patients that I operate. Once I operate, I know. But if I don't, then I have to think about it. I have to investigate them. I have to analyze. I have to review all this. So surgery is not only about operating, it's a lot more. It's about. So let me take you through the experience in surgery. Uh, this is the picture you have of surgery of people, you know, pulling things out. This is again an old fashioned picture. Um, modern surgery is a bit like this. With a lot of instruments and uh, remote access and so on. And the final picture is this. The current trend in the world is to do surgery robotically. I'm not entirely sure that this is an essential component in a surgical career in Sri Lanka, but that's the way the world is moving, robotic. The main problem with robotics is the cost, but otherwise it's a good operation for certain things. So there are many areas in surgery, I think Ivan has already told you some of these things, but these are the general things. You have general surgery, orthopedics, trauma, urology, and so on. I don't know, I'm not going to go through this. Some of these things are no longer valid because, for example, transplantation is no longer offered as a separate thing. Transplant is always joined to something. And then there are the others, orthopedics, ENT, eye, and so on. So there are many areas in surgery that if you do not want to do a particular thing, then you cannot for something else. So there are many opportunities in surgery. Um, why do you want to... Uh, you say because it's a challenge. I, when I started, had no doubts that I wanted to be a surgeon. As I tell medical students, can anybody imagine me as a psychiatrist? <laughs> <laughs> they will get worse, so I will leave. So, one thing you, I will assure you, it's never boring. Most of the time, it's unpredictable, particularly when you go to theater. It can be unpredictable and, and exciting. And also, no, I, I really like this. Now, our friends are very, uh, very good at all this thing. You, you are a typical surgeon. I'm so happy because when they say typical surgeon, what do they mean? They mean that you're intelligent, you're conscientious, you're creative, you have courage, you have to judge, you are decisive. So why, why should I be unhappy to have all these surgical traits? Yes, these are the qualities that you will need if you want to be a surgeon. Also, you are not born a surgeon, nobody. I guess some people will have some natural ability with their hands, but you are actually trained as a surgeon. So anybody with a certain degree of ability, intelligence and decisiveness can become a surgeon. So please don't think. Females, yes, why not? If they are willing and able to work, why not? And uh, manual dexterity is handy. But it is not a prerequisite. Please don't think that if you can't do things with your hand, you can't be a cat. Only thing you will need a little bit more training than other people. Also, 
<laughs> I must tell you, some of the surgeons, very famous surgeons, were not very good with their hands when they started. Uh, I will not mention names, but this is true. Uh, anybody can be trained that way, right? So, surgical trades are nothing to. If you are a typical surgeon, excellent, very good. Uh, and also, you must try uh, in surgical enterprise, meaning you should be able to. You must be able to go to theatre and operate. If you don't operate, you're not a surgeon. But operating is not the only thing, as I said. You, more than anything, you must be flexible. You see, when you start operations, you realize that, look, this is, uh, what is happening is not what I expected. So you should be able to flex it. And then make a decision and move on. Otherwise, what to do? Patient is anesthetized, now the operation not progressing. So both these qualities are very important, flexible and decisive. And also, surgeons, they tend to predictable. And uh, this unpredictability you must enjoy, you must cherish, and you should be able to face it. Then you have the, uh, the right requirements to be a surgeon. Uh, being comfortable means that uh, you should be a leader because you will always lead a team, team of doctors in the ward, team, team of uh, people, nurses and other people in theatre. So you are the lead person, everybody looks up to you. And so you should enjoy this role. If you're a leader type of person, then you're good to be a surgeon. And also, so motivating a team. You know, you must be able to get the best out of your team. You must know the strength and weakness of each other people and try to get them to help you to work this and then uh, uh, train them to do this. People who are uncomfortable and making quick decisions, most of the time, particularly at night, the data is incomplete, but you have to sometimes operate on incomplete data. So that is very important thing. And of course, very important. If any surgeon tells you they have not made errors or errors or mistakes or haven't had complications, means only two things. They are lying or they are not operating. So you should be able to review your uh, results and learn from them and discuss and carry on. And uh, becoming a student. Surgeon is a lifelong process. But today, I will learn a few things about being a surgeon. And perseverance, we just continue. We we'll persevere and it will outweigh the small differences in text read and all the other things that you may think about as doctors or students. And uh, we must reflect. If you are going to be a surgeon, it's very important to reflect. You know, I did this like this. What am I going to do next time and so on? So that's very important. Surgical, that is the thing that gives you the final thing. This is the most difficult quality of a surgeon, surgical judgment. Should I operate? Should I wait? Should I intervene in another way? Whatever. So that surgical judgment is another quality that a surgeon will need. So does that mean that anybody can become a surgeon? No. <laughs> Obviously, you both hands and reasonably good mental and physical health is necessary. If you are a weekly, then we don't need you in surgery. And most digital students may enter a surgical training program, but remember, entering a program is one thing, enjoying a surgical career is a completely different thing because there are various problems and difficult, it's one of the most difficult training periods, particularly in the registrar period, it's quite tough. But then you will enjoy it after that. What are the rewards? Well, uh, rewards are uh, surgery, powerful and unique in the surgical field, these rewards. Uh, surgeons are able to test it. See, this is the only place where you make a diagnosis, then you operate. You know whether you are right or wrong. There is a tangible endpoint. The only specialty that will give you that. Go and have a look. You know you are right or wrong. And it is satisfying and complete. You know, all of you know, I mean, you know, somebody walks in with a, with a, you know, almost dead by a sample or hands or something like that. In a few days, the patient goes on walking, smiling. And I can tell you, there is no other thing that will give you a better satisfaction than this sort of experience. Okay. And uh, yeah, glamour, prestige, recognition, and so on. You know, all of us have little heroes in our heads when we are students. I'm sure at the top of those lists are surgeons. There may be physicians, I'm not sure, but I know that there will be surgeons in, you know. So the glamour prestige recognition, please don't worry about this. If you're doing your job properly, you'll be there. And of course, private practice. Does anybody know a surgeon who hasn't got private practice? I don't think anybody. 
drawback yes mm, that's okay <laughs> please remember it hard work hard work and more hard work okay uh, throughout your professional career lifestyle issues are always an issue and that is little time of uh, mm, most of the time your time is controlled by other factors not yours but then you will adjust yourself and you know how to cope with this you are throughout your life you are on call that's something that you must all remember there are other specialties but surgery particularly you are on call uh, family life may be affected i'm not talking about my personal life but uh, i'm saying family life may be affected the spouse this that is such again not about my spouse <laughs> this is about general this medical cost we operate and people expect results and when things go wrong you may be vulnerable medical legally particularly if the increasing trend in the country but that is nothing to worry about if you are doing your job properly and if you are doing the best then people will understand and be honest with people then it will be okay and of course this complication you see you only supposed to transplant the hair so anyway so this things happen in surgery so it doesn't matter how do i do my easy I think Timani has already told you. You see, part one pass rate, unfortunately, in MD part one in surgery is about 20 to 40 percent. Then, of course, you have to see part two. Uh, MRC, yes, I must tell you, surgery is only specialty where if you pass your MD in Sri Lanka, you get automatic recognition MRC has from the Glasgow College. Surgery is only specialty. They give you the, the degree without an exam, and uh, so on. So. Uh, pass rate is in the md part 2 is about uh, 30 to 50 percent but more than anything as previous speakers i told you get a prospectus if you want to do surgery get rid of the prospectus and go through it then it will tell you okay then you have the training in two years again all these things i'm not going to go through uh, you will have to spend one or two years abroad okay and now in general uh, surgery uh, we are thinking about branching now orthopedics has already branched off there is a separate exam for MD orthopedics, so they branch up early. Neurosurgeon is thinking about it, and so is urology, and they probably will do so in future. And general surgeons now have been empowered by giving them a special area of interest. So you might be a general surgeon with upper GI interest, or lower GI interest, or vascular interest, and so on. So general surgeons in that case will be practicing mostly that area, but they will be general surgeons. And they will then collect data and be specialists by the time they reach a major hospital, they will be particularly good in one area. So that way we have empowered general surgeons as well. And main employee ministry of health, country needs a lot of I think Himani slide showed you we had only 140, but we needed 280. So there were you need a lot of more general surgeons. And working is challenging outstation. You will be on boss. Uh, you have to work in the outstation. That's the only drawback. And I'm told, and I know personally, I work in both, uh, friendships made and rewards are lifelong in these outstation places, unlike in Colombo. Uh, universities, yes, there are nine, and I think there are 10 medical faculties, more opportunities for academic work, more opportunities for some specialization. You are not transferred every four years, like in the Ministry of Health, but you will have to share all facilities with many other members of the department. Opportunities abroad, training positions are available. Uh, there may be certain opportunities for surgeons in countries, but please don't expect any prestigious jobs abroad in surgery. You will not get it. And uh, in surgery, you will never find any job worthwhile abroad. Uh, so let me tell you, I have gone through, I have been out for eight years and come back. Nothing like home, nothing like home. So, Finally, make a choice. Become a surgeon. And it's worth your effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Karim, and for sharing those words of wisdom. Probably you must have shared the experience over 40 years as I do. That in say 10 minutes, so you might not be able to digest everything, but as time goes on, you will realize the value of each and every word that you mentioned, and especially the, the non content related traits like the commitment, dedication, and may I add the punctuality and passion as well. Okay, so let's move it.